We welcome all to St. James House of Prayer on this second Sunday of this season of the Sundays after Pentecost. And we welcome those who are here and those who are online. And we also welcome Clarissa Carr, who's here with us this morning, <laughs> in case anybody hasn't seen you yet. And so, so good to have you here. Let's begin our time of worship. <laughs>
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson is taken from Genesis. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haram. Abram took his wife Sarah and his brother's son Lot, and all the possession they had gathered, and the person whom they had acquired in harm. And they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, to the ark of, to the oak of Moab. And at that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram again, to Abram, and said, To you, or to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country, on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And, um, and Abram journeyed on to stages toward the uh, Negev. The word of the Lord. We will now have the psalm. The refrain will be teached by Mr. Julius, and he will also let us what the voice we would say. Uh, the refrain will be spoken uh, before and after Psalm 33. By the word. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. It is good for the just to sing praises. Praise the Lord with the harp. Play to him upon the psalty and lark. Sing praise to the Stand him with all your skill upon the trumpet. For the Lord, the Lord is right, and all his words are sure. He loves righteousness and justice. The loving kindness of the Lord fills the whole earth. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, by the breath of the mouth, all the heavenly hosts. He gathers up the waters of the ocean, as in a water skin, and soars up the depths of the sea. Let all the earth fear the Lord, and all who dwells in the world say in all of him. For he spoke, and it came to pass. He commanded, and it fell fast. The Lord brings the holy spirit to us. 
the thoughts and desires of the peoples, but the Lord will stand fast forever, and his design of his heart will age to age. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people he has chosen to be his truth. second reading is from Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void, for the law brings wrath, and where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest in grace and be guaranteed to all of his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. <clears throat> in the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, hoping against hope, he will lead that he will become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he was considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his face was reckoned to him as righteousness. In other words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus saw a man called Matthew sitting at a tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he had heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, Suddenly, a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly, a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak, for she said to, her, uh, to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly, the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping, and they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We live out of hope. We live out of the emerging reign of God. And we live into forgiveness, reconciliation, and restoration. Sermon summary, all done. There we go. <laughs> to live out of hope, our whole story about Abraham in Genesis is an amazing one because Abram and Sarah were called, he got a new name, Abraham, out of it, and they took their possessions, they went, they moved towards the land of Canaan as God had instructed them and God told them you will be the father of many nations and Sarah you'll be the mother of them and they went on in faith into this new land and kept living out of that hope and as we hear in the epistle to the Romans about hope, it says, hoping against hope, he believed he would become the father of many nations according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead for he was about a hundred years old, and when, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. They'd been at it a long time, and there was no children. There were no children. And it would come as a great surprise to them both when it ultimately would be fulfilled. But they lived out of hope. Yesterday, our vestry met, and 
Gina Sanders was asked to do the meditation, and I was so struck by the meditation because she was talking about hope, I said, could you send it to me and can I read it? And I marked a couple spots because she actually wrote us a page and a half, but she said, I hope, I hope, and she was talking about our parish life. She says, how many times have we heard ourselves express this insatiable yet conspicuous phrase? I love the way she turned on that. This insatiable, because it's always out in front of you, but it's something we still are going to say. This insatiable yet conspicuous phrase, it feels good to declare it, but do we believe it? Think of Abraham, think of Sarah. Feels good to declare it, but do we believe it? And then she asks, can this expression also be viewed as a source of fruition? Think about that. I was reading, every now and then I read a big, thick, heavy book. I buy it on Kindle and it's not as nearly as big or thick or heavy. In fact, there's nothing to it. But uh, it was all about cognitive science and how we know what we know and how we think what we think. And this cognitive science, this t scientist was pointing out that people who live out of faith are a whole lot better off than those who live out of reality. Because if you look at reality, you might despair. If you look at what you consider real, you might see no way forward. And eyes of faith see possibility where possibility to any reasonable mind does not exist. Think about Abraham. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations and not weakened in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was a hundred years old. I mean, you can hear him right now. He, hey, old man, you're going to be the father of many nations, to which he replied with the negative, which is a double positive, which apparently you can't do in English, but he said, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. A double positive that means no way. And his condition was only half of it. Consider Sarah, not much better. So the two of them, in all reasonableness, in all reality, would have said no. But instead, they live out of hope, which drew them to discover possibility where possibility to a reasonable person did not exist. And I think that's what Gina was getting at. Can this expression also be viewed as a source of fruition? You bet it can. And so this cognitive scientist agreed with that, saying people who live out of faith can see things that are not even there. Because the eyes of faith can see possibility where a reasonable person would say no possibility exists. Which means we are living according to the emerging reign of God. Just as like in the Lord's Prayer, on earth as it is in heaven, when we can see on earth as it is in heaven, then we can see with eyes of faith to see things that aren't even there. But it creates possibility, which then can bring it about. And that emerging reign of God can start breaking out all around us when we discover that God's grace precedes and follows us. God's grace goes in front of us, and God's grace comes behind us, and he says, I know it in there, but watch. 
Just watch and follow me. So Gina continued, my fellow vestry members, can we build a stronger foundation guide our by, guided by our discernment of what is to come? So you discern what, not what's here, but by what is to come, and you use that to build your foundation. Doesn't quite make sense, except through the eyes of hopeful faith. That's how it works. If we can answer affirmatively, now is the time for a miraculous intervention of the Holy Spirit as we remain steadfast with unwavering fortitude, contributing to its success. That's it. The faith that contributes toward what is not yet, but which is possible and seen only through eyes of faith. When you start thinking like that, you start wondering, who's got a take on reality anyway? Is it the realist who's despairing? Or is it the person of faith who lives out of hope for things which might even be unseen and not even reasonable? And you say, I think I'll live that way. I think I'll live according to the promises of God and the hope that comes to me because of it. And when I live into it, it starts coming into fruition. Not that we get conditional about it. Sometimes you've got to go a long time before you see the fruits. But you're not going to see them any other way. You're not going to find the path. So God is inviting us by God's grace. And then he says, I want you to learn this. It's not about what you do right or what you do wrong. It's about the fact that I greet you with healing, restoration, and mercy. He tells his followers, Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. That's the pathway. Is one of forgiveness, restoration, mercy, forgiveness. Go and learn what this means because I have not, I, I did not call the righteous. I have not come to call the righteous. I came to call the sinners. I came the ones for whom they know life's broken. That's okay. Come on. Come on. Mercy, forgiveness, healing, restoration. And then he went about doing it. He went off, healed the woman who had the audacity 12 years hemorrhaging, she sees Jesus walking, Jesus walking by. Her face says, maybe if I could just touch his cloak, it'll be all right. He says, who touched me? He turns around. He says, my daughter, you are healed. Your faith has made you well. And then the daughter of the leader of the synagogue, she's dead. Why is everybody crying? when, in fact, Jesus says, ah, she's only sleeping. And she gets up and wakes up. And I think she looked pretty dead to the people who were wailing. And so we have an invitation today to look not at the reality as this world looks at it. Let's look at our reality through the eyes of the reign of God that says, God, let me look at this as how it should be. Let me look at things as how they are called to be. And let me have the hope and faith to walk in that direction and to live into it. And then God says, yes, come on. And he says, and I will greet you with not a preoccupation about what's wrong, I'm going to greet you 
with healing, with restoration. I'll greet you with new life. And we're invited to that same walk that Abraham took. You'll be the father of many nations, he told to the old man who said, who was as good as dead, and his barren spouse. And for them and for us, we're invited to a life of faith, of hope, of healing, and of restoration. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of our name, of one being the Father, through him all things were made, for us and our salvation.
we pray especially for our Hope Ministry, that you aid us in our pursuit of justice. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. For those who suffer, for the sick, for the lonely, for the hungry, for victims of political oppression, that mercy and compassion may transform their sorrow into joy. Remembering especially Joe Music, Victor Ferguson, Fred Keene, Margie Jefferson, Stella Jacob, Doug Warren, Moselle Rhodes, Dorothy Batson, Gina Norris, Ruby Lockhart, Ernest Reese, Claire Kennedy, Ivy Martin, Dolores Thomas, Eleanor Solomon, and Rich Grinnell. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. For the unemployed and those demeaned or victimized by their work, that they may find new opportunities for joy and satisfaction. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. And for all who have died, especially those whose witness has strengthened and encouraged us along the way. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <coughs> Most merciful God, God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of God's love. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and happy Sunday to you. We are indeed grateful for all of you who have joined us virtually for our worship service today, and for those of you who are present in our building, we say welcome. And if you are a guest who's visiting with us today and would like to stand and make yourself known, we would love to greet you. We especially want to hear from Mrs. Clarissa Carr, who's with us today. <laughs> Ms. Carr, do you have any words of wisdom for us? This is your home. These are our announcements for today. For those of you who are worshiping virtually, we are most grateful for our camera operators, Leela Miser, Carla Edwards, and Carlotta Walker. However, they are in need of some help. So if you would like to be a part of our virtual ministry, we ask that you would contact Leela Miser. They are willing to train you. It's not difficult. And they will be here as a support for you. You will only have one Sunday out of the month to control our little pad over there for our virtual worshipers. So please, if this is on your heart to participate in this ministry, we ask you to please see Leela at your earliest convenience. We would like to announce that the worship committee will have their monthly virtual meeting this Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Worship committee members, uh, be on guard. Put this on your calendar and ink it in, not pencil, ink it in. We would like to wish a happy birthday again to John Williams, who celebrates his birthday on the 14th. And we would also like to wish happy anniversary again to Robert and Jackie Brown Reader, who celebrate their anniversary on the 17th, and to Julie and Kevin Sneed, who celebrate their wedding anniversary on the 17th. We would like to say a big thank you to our guest organist today, Joanne Winslow, who is filling in for Linnea, who is on vacation for the month of June. Welcome back home. Ladies, please remember that if you have not brought your $10, I'm sure you can give a check today to Ms. Elaine Rollick for our celebration next Sunday in honor of Father's Day. Please make sure you bring the, give this to her today. Thank you. These are our announcements. Father, anything to add? You've done it well. Thank you. God bless. 